welcome to See Yourself at Minot State. Um, my name is Renee and I am the Canadian Admissions Counselor here and tonight we're gonna you're gonna get the chance to learn a little bit more about being a student here at Minot State especially a Canadian student. Um, if you guys could do me a favor if you could um, type your name into the live chat section so we can just see who's here and um, that way we can make sure we get your questions answered. That feature will be where you can type in your questions that you have for us. And um, now I'm going to introduce Kent and Brianna, uh, two current Canadian students here. And so just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm Brianna. I'm in the Communication Disorders program here at Minot State. This is my fourth year, and I'm from Laird, Saskatchewan. And uh, my name is Kent, and I'm in the Elementary Ed program here at Minot State. And I am a junior, and I am from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, so we're just going to start off with an easy question. Uh, what's your favorite thing about Minot State? Um, I think like the really small class sizes I really like because I really get to know my profs and it's really easy to make friends that way. And I just find that all the faculty and staff, um, they really want you to be successful. That's what I find. Yeah, and I'd probably have to add to that because uh, I also like the small town feel to it. It kind of feels like I'm still at home back in Saskatchewan and uh, getting to know your professors um, is different than if you go to school in uh, Canada because you probably are in a class size of 300 and you probably won't ever get to know your professors. Great, thanks. Yeah. So what is one thing you wish you knew more about when you were looking into coming to school in the United States? Hmm. Um, for me, possibly the exchange rate. Honestly, I don't know about you, but I did not really understand it. I literally was just like, oh, everything's like way cheaper here, which some things are. Um, but if you want, you can get your parents to explain that to you. So you kind of just have to keep that in mind when buying certain things. I guess that yeah. was one thing that I thought. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Definitely got to keep an eye on the money situation when you're spending money down here. Yep. But uh, for me, I don't know. My uh, girlfriend had been here for two years prior, so I kind of, I kind of knew the ins and outs before I came down here. But um, one thing would just be um, school-wise. I was out of school for a couple of years, and I just didn't really know what to expect coming into it, and it was kind of a shock at first. But once you get the hang of it and get into a rhythm, it is pretty easy to get used to it. Great. Uh, so we actually had a question from our viewer. Um, what is something that everybody should know about crossing the border? Like, did you have any issues just because you were Canadian? Um, at first, I feel like it's a little bit scary. Like, I feel like I still like get nerves crossing the border, but they're very helpful. Um, Elizabeth Sund here, she helps you and like walks you through everything. Um, so, so far I haven't had any troubles, um, yeah, they're usually pretty friendly, yeah, haven't really had yeah, any troubles. Yeah, pretty much the same thing, pretty much the same thing with me, there's, uh, they are really helpful, they look intimidating when you're crossing the border and handing them your papers and wondering if you're going to get let in or not, mm -hmm. but as long as you don't have anything hiding in your suitcases, you should be fine. Yeah. So what kind of special documentation do you have to have with you when you're crossing? Um, pretty much just your, um student visa and your passport is really all I need. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, and can you just describe what a typical day like is for you? Um, for me, I'm very busy. <laughs> um, so I have classes every day, just like anyone else. Um, and then I have two jobs on campus. Um, so I give tours. And then I'm also in the ASTEP program here. And so we work with the students with disabilities and so we take them to classes and things like that um, so that's kind of like in between all my regular classes um, so that really keeps me busy um, going to the gym if I'm motivated that day <laughs> um, that also in between classes and then vo volunteering and all that so yeah and for me uh, my days are also pretty busy I um, since I'm on the men's hockey team, we my days are filled with class all morning, followed by practice right in the, conveniently in the middle of the school day, <laughs> and then st straight straight off the ice back to class, and then sometime after that you got to do your homework, go to the gym, 
hang out with your friends. Don't just lock yourself in a room. So I know I keep myself pretty busy most of the time. Well, sounds like it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Brianna, you mentioned working on campus. So can you talk a little bit more about how life is, the fact that you have to work only on campus and you can't work off campus? Yeah, so as Canadian students, we aren't allowed to work anywhere off campus. Um, you need like a work visa, visa for that. Um, but we have the Student Success Center here. Um, so you can just go there. They have a lot of different options. You can like work at the library. You can be a student ambassador and give tours. Um, be a tutor. There's lots of different options. Um, the only thing is you can only work a certain amount of hours I believe it's like 18 mm -hmm. hours a week and so you just can't cross that um, but other than that it's it's really nice because then you get more involved with campus too you get to know people yeah you get to know people and yeah they're super helpful with helping you find a job so that's been really nice for me for sure yeah. and for me I never had a job on campus just because I'm trying to work it around hockey and everything like that but it would be something I could consider if my schedule freed up a little bit more time. Okay. Um, can you talk about what you do on the weekends? Um, my favorite thing to do on like a Sunday is to go to Caribou Coffee and do homework. That's like a nice study spot for me. A lot of communication disorders girls go there. Um, yeah, hanging out with friends, um, going to a movie, you can get in for a discounted price with your student ID, which is really cool. Um, going to the mall sometimes. Um, I'm living off campus now, so going grocery shopping, um, anything like that I enjoy doing. Yeah, usually for us, it's just a time to uh, catch up and relax and uh, enjoy not being a student for a little bit. And Usually for me, I just, if I'm not playing hockey, I'm usually just sitting at home watching TV or playing video games or something taking my mind away from school for a little bit. So you mentioned going off campus to the movie theater, to the mall, the grocery store. Can you talk about how easy it is to get around around campus and off campus? Yeah, um, so I lived on campus my first two years and I didn't have a car. Um, again, it's really easy to make friends here. So I made friends really fast and they were able to drive me around. I just asked. <laughs> for rides a lot of the time, so that's really nice. Um, so I honestly don't feel like you need a car right away. Um, now that I'm living off campus, it is obviously nice to have a car to go grocery shopping and things like that, um, but it is pretty accessible if not, so. Yeah, and the, and the school is small, so it's easy to get around the campus. You don't need a vehicle at all to get around campus, but I mean, it's just, it's nice to have a vehicle. I, wherever I go, usually I just like having a vehicle with me. I just feel like I'm more in control of what I want to do kind of thing. So it's nice to go get groceries whenever you want and not have to rely on a friend or something. So yeah, it's definitely nice. Um, so you talked about making friends on campus. Um, was, you said you found it to be a little easy. Can you talk about if you had any difficult time with making friends? Uh, were there anything or anything on campus that was helpful for you? And did you just make Canadian friends? Were your, are your friends all Americans? Talk about that. Um, well, again, I lived on campus to start out with, and I think that just really helps you out. Um, the RAs really encourage you to do the open door policy. Um, so that first week, kind of just getting to know everyone. Um, you kind of have your built-in first friend with your roommate, so that's really nice. Um, they usually let you know who your roommate is ahead of time so you can like Facebook message them they'll have like their email or something so that's what I did I'm still friends with my first roommate um, I lived in Cook Hall here um, so that was really nice um, but yeah even the small class sizes that's really easy to make friends too and then just getting yourself like involved like actually going to campus events we have a ton of events available um, so going to all those, again, maybe getting a job on campus. Um, we have a lot of clubs available as well. Um, so maybe getting involved with that. We usually have like a club for like every major. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I did it. Um, a lot of my friends are Canadian, but I do have a lot of American friends as well, so. Yeah, and for me it was, uh, I know I kind of got lucky. I showed up here and had 20 immediate friends being part of the hockey team. and. Also my girlfriend who I lived with my fresh, freshman year. So 
I got a, I got a little head start, but I'm also a pretty social guy, so I found it pretty easy to make friends and I don't know, just talking to talking to people in your classes. Don't don't be shy. Don't just be the person sitting in the back of the class with your hood up the whole time. Go out there and talk to your talk to your classmates because you're probably gonna have more classes with them throughout uh, throughout your four years. Thank you. Um, so can we talk about how difficult the I twenty form is? <laughs> Um, we both said that our moms or dads <laughs> did it for us. Um, it is a little bit difficult. Like when you're first applying, obviously you're moving to a different country. It's a little bit difficult, um, but everyone's super helpful here. You can email them at any time. Um, and I'm sure your parents will help you with that for sure. Um, that's kind of how we got through it. Yep, honestly. But. Parents, parents are lifesavers sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Insider tip. Thank them every day. <laughs> so um, with the I-20, how often do you have to renew your F-1 visa? Um, I haven't had to renew mine yet, neither is Kent. Um, I just got accepted into grad school here though, and so because I'm changing my major, I'm gonna have to renew my I-20 and go through that process again. But. Um, did you have to get a new uh, credit card or bank account in the local area? Yes, so I am now with First International Bank here. Um, you don't have to, but some of your credit cards, Canadian credit cards or something, um, they don't work at all places. Um, so sometimes they encourage you to just get a visa, like mine's a visa debit, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I did. Yeah, and same same for me. I just, um, I don't know, I was kind of debating not getting one and just using my Canadian Visa card for everything, but my apartment complex, they didn't accept Canadian cards, they didn't accept checks, they didn't accept anything except for cash, and it would be tough to take out cash without a bank account. So I, uh, I opened up a bank account and just put uh, the correct amount of money in each month to try to stop me from spending it all the time. Um, so you didn't have to, you did switch your credit card and your bank account, but did you have to uh, switch your cell phone plan? Were you able to keep your same one? Uh, did you switch providers? Could you talk about that? Um, so originally I switched over, so I was on SaskTel, and then I switched over to AT&T at first, um, but for that specific plan, it connected to Rogers back at home, and for me, being from a very small town, um, I didn't have a lot of service in certain parts, um, so then, you know, I didn't feel comfortable driving seven and a half hours and not having service a lot of the way, especially in winter. Um, so I switched back to Sastel and now they actually have a pretty good plan, um, so now I'm on that. Yeah. And for me, um, I kind of just went with the, stayed with my provider back home and just went the no data anytime I didn't have Wi-Fi, so that was a little tough. and then. Sastel, the company I'm with right now, they offered a Canada US plan. So I get unlimited data each month um, in Canada or US. So it, that's, it's been nice so far. Um, do you have any tips for our viewers about taking the ACT or the SAT? Um, for me, I'm just not a very good test taker. Um, I'm really bad at test anxiety. I hate taking tests. So like this, I'm like, hey, this is a really big test for me to get into university, everything like that. Um, so there's, I know there's like books and like packages that you can get. I think I had a book. Um, and then just like talking to other people who have already taken it, like what are their thoughts on it? Um, but yeah, you kind of just have to go with it. Some people say to take it twice. I think you took it twice. Mm -hmm. Hey, I took it once. Um, but like, it's kind of up to you. Like sometimes you do want to take it twice because that first time is just a lot of nerves and that second time maybe you'll do better. Um, but yeah, that was kind of my experience with it. For me, I, uh, I played junior hockey, so I was out of school for three years leading up to coming to school. So when they told me I had to take a test that featured math, which I wasn't, which I was already not good at at all. Uh, I was kind of worried, and I wrote it the first time, just without studying, just to go see what happened. And it definitely showed; I didn't do very well. But then um, I just uh, I got some tutoring in math. 
I went to a tutor once a week or twice a week for a couple months and then was able to pass and get in, get accepted to Minot, so. And one thing to note with the ACT or the SAT, there's no US government included on it. You don't need to know your American history <laughs> to sure. pass these tests. Yeah. It's, it's straight regular education system that is general knowledge in both countries. Yeah, it's stuff you've learned in high school leading up, I promise. <laughs> you don't need to know who our first president is. No. <laughs> um, let's talk about something a little bit more fun. Get off the test <laughs> subject. Um, let's talk about the food in Minot State and in the town. Is it great? Is it not great? What's your honest opinion? Um, so living on campus, you'll have a meal plan here. Um, so I did that my first two years and I really enjoyed the food. I feel like they have a lot of different options. So even if you are a picky eater, I feel like they're super good at just giving you different options. Um, they cater to allergies and everything like that. So I had a good experience with that. Um, in Minot, they have really good food. It's honestly hard for me not to go and want to eat out all the time. We have really good restaurants actually. So that's fun on the weekends and stuff like that. And free soup every Tuesday. Yeah. So that's that's a hot commodity in Minot. Everyone goes to free soup on Tuesday. Yeah, I didn't know about that actually in my freshman year, and I was so sad. I went a whole year. <laughs> there was free soup downstairs. I had no idea. So then when I was told that, I was like, oh my goodness, like I wish I would have known that. And like you know, it's gonna be good soup because it's put on by the churches in Minot. So it's like little old ladies. They're so cute, and they're like, here you go. Here's your soup, and just makes your Tuesday that much better. So there's also a dessert table on the free soup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. It's legit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so what's your favorite place on campus other than the free soup line? <sighs> I uh, well the building that we're in right now is Swain. This is my pretty much the education department and uh, it's just quiet. I like to I like to come here and study when I'm when I'm crammed for homework and everything like that. So usually I usually I'm here most nights. So. Yeah, Swain's really a beautiful place. Um, we have the quad where they do like club fairs and stuff. That's always really nice um, when everything's in bloom. Um, the wellness center is really cool and obviously the dome if you've been there, it's really a nice facility. So I like those things too. Um, what are some big campus events? Um, what do you look forward to every year? The hypnotist is always really good. Um, we have grocery bag bingo. Yes, all the bingos are <laughs> awesome. Everyone gets super pumped to go to those. Um, they go and just get a, like a bunch of stuff, so it's really awesome. I've only won once, but <laughs> have you ever won? <laughs> I, I won once. Well, I got a bingo once for the flat screen TV. Wow. And there was only one prize left, so I had to sprint up there, and someone else had a bingo Ooh. right at the front. And just <laughs> bingo. Oh, man. So I have never won anything at bingo, but there is a lot of great prizes, and it's definitely a fun event on campus. Yeah. Um, they also have, like, Rec Fest at the beginning of the year. Um, they have a bunch of, like, outdoor games and everything, um, get free t-shirts. It's really fun when they have like free food outside when it's nice out. Um, a lot of the time, like for homecoming, they'll have free food in the Beaver Dam. A football game, yep. a homecoming football game. Yep, that's really, really fun, so yeah. Um, can you talk about what clubs or uh, student or organizations are popular? I know you're part of the hockey team, but maybe outside <laughs> of the hockey team? <laughs> um, I don't know, Brie would probably have a better understanding of the clubs on campus because I'm sure you're in a few. <laughs> you in a couple. Just a few. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm in Student Ambassadors, so I'm giving tours, um, and we get to do a lot of outreach events. Um, so that's a really fun campus club. Um, there's also like student government. If you, They are awesome there, and they really get their voice heard and make sure the students get their voice heard. Um, so that's really awesome. Um, we have like Special Olympics. I've been part of that for the past four years as well. Um, so we get to do like flag football with them. Um, we've done basketball, things like that. Um, but yeah, there is pretty much like a club for every degree as well. So like for my communication disorders program, we have a NISLA club 
Um, so you're part of a lot of volunteer events. Um, you get to know people in your program. Um, so there's lots of great opportunities for that. Okay. Thanks. Um, what would you say makes the student body at Minot State unique? They're, uh, everyone's just friendly. Like it's uh, touching back on just e making friends easily. It's not just me. I think everyone has an easy easy time of making friends, and it's just uh, every, it just feels like a small town. Like everyone's close, mm -hmm. everyone's together all the time, and uh, no one's ever shy to say hi. Yeah, I really feel like like no matter what's happened, like even with the Humboldt accident in Saskatchewan, like even then, like we're in a different country and we like the whole school kind of came together for that um when the boys just won national championships like everyone was watching <laughs> shout out <laughs> um for that um yeah everyone's just like super nice and like all the international students like all the canadians there's a ton of canadians here i just feel like everyone like comes together and everyone wants to like help each other be successful and um i just think that's really awesome and yeah i've had a really good experience with that so so we have some questions from our viewers. Uh, what is your favorite class? Um, favorite class. My favorite class. Um, I took it my freshman year. It was um, a geography class, and the professor. I just loved him so much that I uh, picked up a minor in geography, and it's just been. Uh, I always had a dream to be a meteorologist, and so I've always <laughs> taken uh, those type of classes. I really um, for me, too, I guess it kind of is the same thing with my minor. Um, I have a deaf and hard of hearing minor, and my class, favorite class is probably um, American Sign Language. Um, I've taken the first one, and then I took Signed Exact, and then now I'm taking ASL 2. Um, so that's been really cool. I feel like with a lot of the classes, you get a lot of hands-on experience, which that's how I learn, so I really appreciate that. Um, so I've had a lot of good experiences throughout all my classes but and uh yeah with the education program too one thing like uh i love about the program is that you with every education class you take you get the opportunity to do a clinical experience along with that and i know from some of my friends back in, or in saskatchewan that uh, are in the education program back there they pretty much get their whole degree and then realize they hate teaching because they have no experience in the classroom until they get their degree, pretty much. So I know a lot of friends that I've had who were, thought they wanted to be a teacher, and after their first class, they realized, yeah, this isn't for me. So I love my education classes just because of that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Do you guys have a favorite memory of your time here? Um, That's a tough one. There's so many. <laughs> um... Honestly, I always remember, always remember the homecoming weekends. It's just mm -hmm. like the atmosphere on campus. Every there's like free this, free that, <laughs> the football game. Everyone's out. It's nice outside. And so I mean, I usually I usually enjoy those homecoming weekends the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are a lot of fun. Um, honestly, just the times that like I've met some of my best friends here at Minot State. Um, I just didn't really realize what I was missing really with friendships. Um, I met my first friend the first day of school in the cafeteria. She's like, hey, can I sit here? I'm like, yeah, I guess so. I was super shy starting here. Um, and now we're still best friends now. Um, so just like hanging out with your friends. Um, all the, again, the campus events are so much fun. Um, going to hockey games for me in our um, degree to communication disorders. I've had an awesome time just being able to observe and work in the clinic myself. Um, yeah, just a lot of good experiences, so. I'm sure your national championship is up there too. Yeah, that felt pretty good. <laughs> that was a pretty good memory. Um, so can you talk about whether or not, you, like, do you feel safe on campus? Do you feel like Minot State provides a lot of safety measures for you? I, yeah. I feel safe all the time on campus. Yeah. I, there's nothing to worry about at all. Yep. I feel like coming from a small town, like my mom was obviously super worried. Like I feel like I didn't even know how to cross the street. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, their campus security is awesome. Um, they offer rides at night, like even all day. Um, so that's really nice. They have blue lights around campus if you're ever in trouble or see trouble. Um, yeah, I've always felt super safe here, so. All right, well, that's it for the questions we had prepared and it doesn't look like we have any viewer questions. So if you just wanna say final notes and then we can wrap up till next time. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed watching and I uh, hope to see you guys hopefully next year. Yeah, good luck with everything. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. All right.